Okay, I'm going to call to uh, order our Consolidated Public Works Board meeting uh, for June 22. Um, some folks to keep in our best thoughts, uh, good, not so good, and in between, I guess. Uh, Jerry and Suzanne Myers uh, had a baby just uh, about 36 hours ago. That's Nancy Shub's uh, first granddaughter. Uh, so we want to keep them in mind. We share the joys as well as the... Uh, the not so good things in life. Uh, Ron Pugh, former city council member, his uh, mother died just a few days ago. And uh, resident Jerry Kuhn, who's been active in our community, is a silver alert has been issued for him, but he has not been seen since last Saturday. So uh, lots of folks to keep in our uh, best thoughts. Thank you very much. And we have in our esteemed guest presence today, Mr. Al Tucker, longtime serviceman. Would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Al? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 I can always tell when Ron Pugh is not in our midst because everybody does the typical rhythmic one nation under God. And Ron's always one nation under God. You know, it's like, okay, that screws everybody. Uh, we have uh, two guests, and uh, Mary Thorpe asked to address us and is on the agenda. And then we're going to hear from our friend Al Tucker. But uh, Mary, you're first up. What do you have for us? I think you've got uh, ideas for jawbone trash cans, is that right? I do. Okay. So, um, in accordance with your green award, um, Buchan uh, create Buchanan has two of those Wayfinder trash cans that aren't being used right now. And we would like to contribute them to the city and what that for, um, uh, I can't think what it's called. You know, putting cans and bottles. Recycling. 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 Thank you. Um, so it would require working with the city, having the city pick those up and take care of them for recycling. So it's not a trash can. It's, a it's not a tra trash can. What we'd like to do is we'd like to make a top so that, um, you know, it just takes certain kinds of, of trash. Uh, excuse me, recycling. <laughs> Recyclable. <laughs> Recyclable, thank you very much. <laughs> and we'd like to know if the city would accept them and work with us to have that work for the city. And we'd like to put them in Jawbone Park, I forgot to say that. Let me get this straight. You're a guest that's coming here to give us something other than grief, and you want us to know if we'll accept the gift? Is that? You still have to do some work. Wow. You have to do something. You have to no. do some work. It's not free. Yeah. There are, <laughs> freedom is not free, right? Right. <laughs> uh, you've heard Mary's pitch, and it sounds like a good one, and it sounds like something that uh, will make us even slightly more sustainable down at Jawbone. Pam? I have a question. Question. Uh, I was going to bring this up also. Do you have, like, one for plastic, one for cans, one for glass? We have houses? two. Okay. So we'll ha have to work out how what we want to recycle, what's okay. the... Because I was approached about that down there last week, and they they were asking about plastic mm -hmm. and cans. Plastic, because glass, oh, there's no market for glass right now, so maybe one for plastic and one for cans. That would make the most sense. And, and the, that was one of the recommendations from the Sustainability Committee, that there, that anyone who uses Jawbone mm -hmm. or downtown be required to recycle. But it does require, you know, the guys have to go pick that up. Right. Yeah. And there's occasional sorting because yeah. people will still put their... Leftover potato salad in the, uh, yeah. you know. That would, I mean, what you were saying is that the lids would be designed so that that would be, you know, the can would be what would fit down at the Right. Bottom. But Except Cali Sam's also um, suggested having some kind of informational. Right. That's um, what I would. Something there that would to, remind to people. To teach people. Could. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, to educate they, people. They are identical to the two on Main Street. Good. So you have those, the rain shrouds that there's room oh, for information good, there. Good. We can restrict so the size. Doesn't rain doesn't dump in it or anything. No, no yeah. water goes in. Uh, 
you know. So, and if what we should. The, excuse me. What about, are they easily for somebody to go in there and just make a mess? Just empty them up all over the place? No, you got to open the door and you got to pull out the the so uh, receptacle. So there's a plastic locked. receptacle inside the metal enclosure. Okay, so it'll be locked basically? It's not locked. The ones on Main Street aren't locked. I mean, it's a friction fit situation. And Our garbage cans aren't locked. They're either. not. No. I so, yeah, no. so CJ, is there, <laughs> do you put a bag inside the plastic receptacle so you they could, could just take the bag? Because I think that's what they were, that, I think, isn't that what they prefer with the recycling? I think that's what they told us on campus is that they like a certain kind of bag that then they can. That's because yeah, you can simple. see through it and make sure that it's not contaminated. And yeah, it should probably be beside another normal trash can, so right they can throw they have their the choice there trash in there. Yeah. Normal. That's a little ostracizing to the abnormal trash can. You know, let's try to be more politically Typical. correct. Typical. General trash. General, General trash. trash. So it's like regular trash. An hour time. They're painted. Any other questions? They're currently Anything painted black. Anything else you have? The color. I was asking about the color. Right? The black. Black. All right. It sounds like a great pitch. Uh, I would entertain a motion that we accept the gracious gift as outlined by Mary Thorpe. May I have a motion to that effect? Sure. Second. I think I heard Mr. Waldo like a I think it was first. thousandth of a second first, yeah. followed by Council Lady Capari. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Hearing of the need for none, I'll call for that question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. So we'll, uh, we'll Thank you. It. Thank you, Mary. You're, you're welcome to stay right at me. That, that, you know, that, I will for That might while. be the <laughs> highlight of the meeting, but you never know. <laughs> Al's going to bring us something that's, uh, he's, I've got a one-up Mary now, so what do you got for us, Al? He says, I can't take it, I'm leaving. Well, <laughs> mine isn't quite as gracious, uh, uh, more self-serving than, uh, I'm just dealing with the word on the street, so, you know, what I ha have might be completely false. I uh, uh, understand that you're all planning to uh, pave uh, Lincoln, West Lincoln uh, this summer. And that uh, Brad's nodding affirmatively to that. Is that correct? Yeah, from Pinnell to Eastview. Okay. To where? From Pinnell Street up to Eastview. You've answered my question. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. well, good to see you. I was told that it was going to stop at Lincoln Heights, so it just, no, it that just East. didn't seem to make sense. It'll go to Eastview. Hey, I will while well, well, I'm here, and, and, and that is good news. Thank you. Um, I've lived in lots of communities. Uh, you know, being in the Air Force, we move a lot, and so I've been in lots of different states. And, and I just think that the street department, the snow plowing, and, and, and the uh, recycling programs that you guys have is as good as I've seen anywhere. Okay. And uh, I think the folks that live in this town, if they haven't lived anywhere else, they really don't realize just want a gem that they have have here so uh, it's very just nice want to say, say. I, good I on you, you guys so. I often tell people if they think Buchanan's horrible they need to travel more <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> all right well, hey, no, no, ca no camera club plugs or anything uh, hey, I like the photos good job keep it up <laughs> <laughs> thanks Al. you're welcome right, to thank stay you. yeah thank you for coming uh -huh. okay that takes us in at Maria, did you have anything? No, under I have your okay, so we're ready to move into our department reports, and uh, Brad is here to bring us up on some of our exciting projects over the past week or two. In between the sometimes heavy raindrops, you've seen some things happening down in the Jawbone area. Brad, you want to bring us up to speed on those? Well, we've got the first 70 feet of walk board. Um, they just set another 130 feet of forms today. And uh, as soon as we can get concrete, be hopefully a load towards the beginning of the week, next week, and then after that, as far as jawbone goes, will be pretty much electrical until after the first of July, yeah. and then try to get the lighting and stuff up because one of the requests was hopefully to have the lighting for relay for life night, July fifteenth, yeah. So we're trying to shoot that goal, yeah. and then that's about all for the 
job main project and then we'll roll in with the Trader's Alley starting on the lower end of it and working our way up while we're in Jawbone working also. Plan as we actually pave Trader's Alley yeah. is still going to be one where we're going to press yes. uh, the brick look into it for possible painting yeah. and all that good stuff. Yes. Good. Good. That's the whole night agenda anyway is done that way. Good. I haven't heard any changes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have all the legal agreements with the property owners done for that? No. No, we're still we've got a couple I think we're we, we have commitments, but we haven't reduced them to written format. So Mary Hall, uh, Davis Health, uh, we are trying to set up a meeting with John Moss. You're more than welcome to help coordinate that, but uh, I got to get John's most recent telephone number and see when he's going to be in Buchanan. To, he, he's endorsed through his son the notion of uh, taking care of that wall that's about midway down in that block, but we want to make it crystal clear what our intentions are and get him to sign off on a, a letter agreement to let us go forward. So. Brad, when did you say that might start? The which? The Trader's page. Alley? Yeah. The Trader's Alley. I didn't mean to put it'll be eyes. it'll be in July. Okay. We'll start back in on that. Hopefully, we'll have uh, job on as he indicated, mostly complete before July fifteenth. Right, fingers got that. crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay. Well, anything else, Brad? Zink? Anybody have any questions for Brad? And then we're going to be moving over to Nona, Florida, First Street. Doing some sidewalk work over there, the mural project, sidewalk. Yeah, and then we've got the sidewalk big project on Canal Street there by First Community Bank to yep, yep. get done. And while we're on that corner, we're hoping to do at least two of the ADA ramps while we're in there on Main Street. Two there and one at the mural. And then one at the mural yeah. when that project comes up. Yeah. we got 16 points of intersection that are ADA concerns three blocks, believe me, it adds up to 16 points of intersection. And uh, we we met, we, Jay, Brad, Jerry, and I met with Doug Gould, uh, with DOH, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, two or three of the intersections are okay, or two of the three points of intersection are okay, which leaves us with like 13 to fix at some level, and we're going to knock three of those out here in the next few weeks. So uh, we won't be too far from being halfway to where we want to be. And in the next year or two beyond this year, we'll try to knock out the others and give us just a little bit of time. We'll be the best ADA compliant downtown in all of West Virginia, right? Just, just give us a little time. Okay. Any questions uh, for Brad? Okay. Brad, we may need you here again in just a short bit. Amby, do you want to bring us up to speed with our financial stuff? <coughs> the balance sheet uh, for money market we'll checking $101,606, and then the CD and state, the savings stays the same, $227,000. One revenues and expenditures. Uh, we had uh, $20,000 in expenditures and $11,000 in revenue, so um, $9,000 more expensed. Then uh, collected, and then you have a list of all the invoices that were paid in the month of May. Nine thousand. Yeah, it's in there. It's a nine thousand, which is exactly nine thousand sixty-one dollars and ninety-three cents. Yeah. Bottom of. Oh, I see it. And then so, there, uh, <laughs> later on, we'll have a budget revision. And then I have some notes on the um, parking ordinance that we want to talk. And uh, Morgan's here to answer any questions. They said they might like some input from the parking enforcement office. Sure. Well, I see on here, the, you know, the budgeted prior to the current mm -hmm. ordinance. So we uh, we modified these expectations. Right for, now, are, are you talking about the revised part? Yeah. Okay. Well, we get, yeah. When we get to the revised part, the only thing I revised was expenditures, and it shows on your budget you have a ninety thousand dollar 
balance on hand, which right now you have 101. So, I mean, I didn't change anything in revenues or expenditures or balances on hand. Because obviously they're probably not going to be there, right? They are definitely not there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I guess we're going to have to examine yeah. how to make that all work going yes. forward. Um, when I did a spreadsheet um, with what we've expensed and what the revenues are, and we're constantly eating into the reserve. So if you if you look at our expenditures and revenues, we've expensed forty thousand dollars more than we had, which is about what we were getting in parking revenues. So, right. Yeah, this is definitely a discussion when we get down to that. Um, okay. Very good. Question, Trambi. I would entertain a motion that we approve the most recent financial report. May so I have moved. a motion? I have a motion by Mr. Ryland. Second. May I have a second? I have a second from Mr. Waldo. Is there any discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving our May financials signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. In your uh, correspondence and information stuff, you've got uh, the Consolidated Public Works Board meeting July 27th tour of the uh, street department facility. We're going to do that at 3 o'clock and then walk back up the street and actually, those guys don't have as quite a need a little meeting space, uh, streets and parks, as we have for waste, water, and sanitary. So we'll come back up here and have the meeting, uh, but we will have a tour uh, at 3 o'clock on July 27th uh, at the street garage right down the street and then come back up for our regular four o'clock meeting and also uh, fast approaching Thursday July 13th which is actually a water board meeting Thursday um, at three o'clock that day before our four o'clock water board meeting uh, we will have uh, the dedication of the water plant post improvements that we've been working on for the past couple of years down there and the formal rededication of the plant as the Harley A. Brown Memorial Water Plant. So uh, our employees, uh, as many as we can possibly uh, have participate in this, we'll, we're going to close up as many things as we can 2.30 that day to allow them to all be there at 3 o'clock for uh, Harley's dedication. Uh, consent agenda, four items. You have a request from New Community Church they want to uh, do some services at Jawbone in July and August. Uh, you have the Quoters at Heart Outdoor Quilt Show. They're requesting the use of Jawbone from 1 to 5 p.m. on Sunday, September 10th. Uh, you have Fishhawk Acres that is going to do a Main Street picnic in mid-August. And you have uh, an installation request, as we've already acted on, I don't know we need to say anything more about that, the waste receptacles at Jawbone. I would entertain a motion that we approve our consent agenda. So, so we're we allowed to ask questions. Well, let's get it on the table and then we'll have Well, you're approving the agenda, so it doesn't mean you're it. We'll have a discussion on whether you want to approve the consent agenda, and then you can ask questions about anything you want. Okay. So I have a motion by Mr. Waldo. A second by Mr. Rylands. Now is there discussion on the motion? I want to make a point. Laura Meadows on the Fishhawk Acres, if you have any questions, she was going to be here, but she can uh, talk to you on conference call to explain more detail if you have those questions. Okay. And I've been briefed from <laughs> her and others. Now, this, if you look at the event request form, this is in conjunction with an event at the event center. And what they're wanting to do is put tables down Main Street and have a dinner on Main Street, which they're not knowing. I mean, if you have eight foot, every eight foot you can seat 10 people. So I'm guessing a block is about 250 feet. You know, so that's uh, eight feet, eight into 250, 30. So if it's 300 people in one block, I don't know that you need to, you know, what, uh, my thinking or my advice was how about the promenade at Jawbone Park, which they said Main Street or Jawbone, that both would serve the need. I mean, they recently had that potluck dinner 
down there where they took six, five or six picnic tables and put them together. Right. This is on uh, August 12th. What day of the week is that? August. It is 6 p.m. It's a Saturday because the 10th is a Thursday. Yep, it's Saturday. But it's uh, you're right. We're trying to feature Jawbone as much as we possibly can, and they they say either Main Street or Jawbone. Well, do you want me to call? Them I'm one? not in favor of closing the Main Street for that. I think it's going to open up. Oh, Council Lady Capari said sorry. that. Does. <laughs> well, I think it needs to be Jawbone. I I, well, agree. I agree with you. It's, it's, yeah. it's, we made our, our point to feature Jawbone. Right. Why don't we? Need yeah. And, and they say either or. Uh, well, I think it's the, just the uniqueness and, you know, there is a certain marketing aspect to, to the, the having done this and, but, uh, and they feel confident that they can sell the tickets. So I don't, does anyone know how wide, the long, the promenade at Jawbone is? Probably just about a block, also, right? Goes from Spring Street to Spring to Florida. Florida. Yeah. Florida. So you probably would have eight capacity for 300 people there. She's probably, he's probably thinking he's going to be bringing stuff out of the restaurant and serving. So why not, why not down um, Spring Street going toward the Moose? Why not just close that area? You want me to get Laurel? Well, they they mentioned they said Main bones, Street or Jawbone, or Jawbone. So why not just what's uh, both choices? And here, here's now the then thing. you got the sidewalks are eleven feet out. wide, and a table and two chairs are going to take up about look this this is an office. Let's let's approve it for Jawbone. If they uh, change their mind and say, oh no, we 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 got to have it on Main Street, they can come to the July meeting and. Have that put on the agenda for possible further discussion. But why don't we approve it for Java? Notify them that we've approved it for Java, and if there's any, anything else about it, they can come state their position at the July meeting. Does that sound like a winner? Yep. Okay. So we we had a motion to approve their request. Um, could we amend that motion in such a way? that we would be granting approval for this event in Jawbone Park. Would you agree to that, Mr. Waldo? Yes. So Mr. Waldo is amending his motion to designate Jawbone Park. And Mr. Rollins, would you still second that yes. amended motion? Okay, so we have an amended motion where this event would take place in Jawbone. Is there any further discussion on the amended motion? Hearing of the need for none, I'll call for that question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Okay, I have a question for the minutes. Okay. Because the motion was to approve the entire consent agenda. So are you pulling out one item and making a separate mention and not dis a motion and not discussing the rest? Or how do we do this? Yeah, that's a good point. We, we I think we, uh, as I understand it, we, we, uh, we are pulling out. Okay. The uh, Appalachian Food Revival Picnic Request for purposes of clarifying that their permitted venue will be Jawbone Park. Okay. okay. Now we still have those other three or four items in the consent agenda, and we had an earlier motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion on the approval of the uh, consent agenda, those other items that we didn't pull out? I have a question about the um, church services. I looked it up. My first question was, is it every Sunday? And I looked it up, and it is every Sunday. And I was just curious if anybody's been tracking public use of that, because that means that nobody would be able to use that any Sunday so just in those Sunday two morning. months. Yeah. So is it, does anybody else well, have we, a request? We, we mark that on a reservation list. Right. To use it. Right. But I mean, like, do people typically want to use Because that's... A lot of well, they already yeah. use all the, the parking in Jawbone for their services in the church right around the corner. It's just Jawbone. moving it outside for that and hour right. or so. So it wouldn't, it doesn't come, there's not a lot of requests. This is July and August 6th, so that's five, five six Sundays, 9 a.m. to noon. I mean, I generally don't see 
Yeah, that's what I was just so curious. Maybe if someone sitting at a table or charging their phone or something down there on Sunday. We don't have a lot of Sunday morning requests for okay. driving. Yes, I was wondering. What? Okay, and then there's no problem with the church state thing, like a church being able to use governmental property. There's no, no we're not that. giving them any preferential treatment over anybody else. We've had Christmas carolers and well, that's all kinds of other church sponsored activities over the years. Curious. Um, another thing, there won't be 30 days before they'll be having their first service. We've got 30 to 90 days in your request. Mm -hmm. So I looked, I, that was my first question. It's next Sunday, right? No, two Sundays from now. I think we should cooperate with this congregation and let them do their job. I agree too, but I'm just pointing that out that 30 days. We yeah. might want to. Each Sunday in July. Might want to notify them that Sunday, next yeah. year they should get it to us a little sooner so we can act on it before then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're back to approval of the consent agenda. Everything except that thing that we pulled out that we already disposed of. Uh, we have a motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah, because I, I don't see the minutes in there. Am I missing that? I don't see the minutes listed under the consent, the minutes from the previous meeting listed under the consent agenda. It sure should have been in there. Okay. If you would have done a better job of proofing <laughs> the agenda before it came out. Yeah. I did it before. I would. Uh, <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, this alloy woman, she's a tough, uh, she's a tough uh, bird to satisfy. Uh, let's add F5 <laughs> to approval of the May minutes. We'll stick it in, May blank. Okay. You don't need it right now. So F5 under consent agenda would also be the approval of our May board minutes board meeting minutes with that adjustment is there any further discussion on the approval of the consent agenda god you are i can really, ask the emulator you are really pushing the envelope ally yeah. do we pull this out of the consent agenda since we voted on it earlier just pull it out of this now the one the that we pulled out yeah the, okay yeah so you took one out we're sticking one in so it's f4 yeah That's just <laughs> You're the one that's got to type these know, horrible that's minutes. Asking, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. But I get them typed right. Okay, we have a motion. Is there any further discussion, or further, further, further discussion, on the approval of the consent agenda? All those in favor of approving our consent agenda signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, or approved. And now we're down to the good stuff, the strategic issues for discussion and or vote. And G1 is the mural project. Brad, you want to talk a little bit about that? I can chime in, I guess. No, we've got a project getting ready to start down there, but I mean, the gifs of it, I'm not all that familiar with yet. Where is it? Bryson has developed a sidewalk with a parallel adjacent landscape bay that would start at the West Main and uh, North Locust Street intersection and go down to the alley uh, that is beside the clinic. It's 250 feet, mm. something like that long. I don't know the exact dimension. And, uh, there'll be a five foot sidewalk and a three or four foot landscape bay beside it. There's a map out there floating around somewhere that I think we looked at a previous rendition of this. The entrance to the lot will be off the alleyway versus off the plugs. We will also be installing uh, two or three benches David in Sell. front of the mural, mm -hmm. uh, one of which is going to be the green bench to recognize folks that have been yeah. contributed over the years to uh, green endeavors, sustainability, and viral yeah. friendly yeah. initiatives. Oh, okay. In our community. So the landscaping is so not going to be, be in front of the mural. The landscaping will not be in front of the mural because uh, the mural periodically requires repairs, 
light bulbs should be changed, those kinds of things. And the only way you can get in there with the lift is by being able to be right in front of it. And that's the reason we had to take the flowers and landscaping down. We couldn't get in there. So folks have asked, oh, that was one of my favorite thing in Buckhannon. Mm -hmm. Well, look, we lit up the mural. We're going to have more trees, shrubs, flowers than ever before in the landscape bay that's going to go the whole block down. It just won't be in a giant cluster like it was in front of the mural. And is there still time to plant things? Trees are able. I mean, yeah. maybe fall some fall. You know, this also. Or something. By the time they get we're, we're hopeful of doing this, uh, you know, end of July, 1st of August. So we'll still have, oh. we'll still have growing season to uh, do this. It's it's coming up after they finish and drop on in Trader's Alley. We'll be okay. trying to crank that up. So, yeah. Late July. And Robbie Barber's in the loop. He's going to be picking out. And he has saved um, the perennials from... They've been stored. They're waiting to be replanted. Yeah. And uh, Courtney Chittister was supposed to be back with us last week, and she hasn't. Maybe the rain's chased her away again. She's not quite done with the touch-up of the mural itself. We want to finish that up as well. So. Anything else on the mural project, Brad? Is that pretty well, pretty good synopsis of where we are with that? Um, you got a couple of cemetery uh, lot trade matters under G2 and G3. Uh, G2 in Old Hebner, uh, a, a section of our cemetery. Uh, Charles Woody is uh, asking to sell back to the city some lots and acquire some others. Uh, I would entertain a motion, that this is very customary for us to do this, that we grant that request. May I have a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a motion by Sorry. Mrs. Caperi. Mr. Waldo has seconded that motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Call for the question. All those in favor of approving the Charles Woody request for the cemetery lot trade, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. And then in the veterans section, you have uh, really the same request from Ralph Dawson. Uh, spoke just very briefly with Jerry and Teresa about it. Uh, they didn't see any issue with this one either. I would entertain a motion that we approve that request. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Waldo. May I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Rylands. Is there discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving the Ralph Dawson cemetery lot trade request Signified by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Amby, you're back up. Just when we thought it was safe to go back in the water. No, what about the request fee waiver for North Pavilion? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if I'd have kept my glasses on, I would have seen that. The Lewis Upshur parents and teachers are requesting the use of the North Buchanan Recreational Park without having to pay, what, 25 bucks? Uh, it's a fee waiver request. Is this both? But we have multiple the pavilions there, don't we? Four, three, three. So they're utilizing all of them. I don't know. Is that what the request is? Just pavilion one. <coughs> yeah. Pavilion. I should have studied one. it better. Nine thirty to eleven thirty a.m. Nine thirty to eleven thirty a.m. Pavilion one. It is just one of the three pavilions. Do we, have we ever waived this for other nonprofit organizations or? Uh, it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. You don't want to set a precedent. Yeah, I was going to say that's the. It's uh, not, it, in theory, it's not a bad idea, but it's. The folks at Union Elementary School made such a request a couple of months ago, and I paid their fee. <laughs> we probably don't have anything in there that day on Wednesday. Like a chance. Yeah. Sensory bin. Sensory bin. My only concern is, like, TJ, once you start this, though, yeah. how many, how many yeah. non-profits will say, hey, how about we go in there and it's, like, dark and quiet? Take the reservations from 
the uh, there is there is a temptation to be arbitrary and capricious, and we should try to avoid that. I I hear what you're saying quite well. Uh, you, is it the thinking of the board to deny the request? If so, I need a motion. <laughs> I'll pay twelve fifty. I'll pay twelve fifty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you two want to move to move to deny. pay the fee? Okay. Yeah, we'll got it. But I, I think we deny the waiver. Deny the waiver. I, 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 I do. I deny the, the waiver, fee. and we'll cover it internally. And you wow. two want to do the motion? This is like the opposite of graft and corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's also precedent setting. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They'll, be looking, they'll be looking for Rylands and uh, Waldo. I'll say I did it last. That billion is open that night. Okay, so so here's the motion would be that we are denying the request. However, two of our members are going to, uh, out of their own pocket, split the cost of the thing. How about that? That's the motion. And I think that motion was made by Mr. Waldo and seconded by Mr. Islands. <laughs> Is there any discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor uh, of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Now, Andy. Okay. Trying to get you into that budget report, revision stuff. Again, it's cleaning up the budget for the end of the year. Uh, June 30th is the end of our year. We had uh, some money that we could move around from materials and supplies and parks and contract of mowing the cemetery since we didn't contract that out this year. We're doing it in-house. So the uh, line items that we're getting over expensed, uh, we adjusted that around to clean it up for the end of June. No increase or decrease to the budget, 23500 that's moving from one revenue account or one expenditure to account to. We're all looking through here. Do you have a new measure for here? Okay, so it's Last all these things. There it is. Okay, it's on the back of the yep, that's flyer about the group that just asked for the waiver. I would uh, remind the board that as we see how the general fund does with its carry over after July 1. Uh, Ambie will be making some recommendations and meeting with us to see here's how you might consider uh, embellishing certain things, but we're not we're not ready to quite close out the 2016-17 books just yet. Uh, some of these things might get a little rosier depending upon how we finish this fiscal year. <coughs> So we'll be looking to make some changes to our 2017-2018 budget, maybe come our July meeting. This is about 2016-2017. You've heard our Director of Finance's recommendation. I would entertain a motion that we revise our budget accordingly. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Rylands. I have a second by Mr. Waldo. Is there any discussion on that motion? Calling for the question, all those in favor of revising our 2016-2017 budget in accordance with AMBI's recommendations, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. You're approved. It takes us down to G6. Discussion regarding items to revise our parking policy, once known as 2016-8, better known now is Ordinance 409. <laughs> yeah, We're getting away from those 6-8 uh, ordinances that had those bizarre uh, numbering schemes. But, uh, Amby, you want to, back, well, back when we did this last December, January, we knew that there was going to be a learning curve. Uh, there were a couple of things that jumped out as, at us right then that we weren't sure how we were going to handle them. And we all decided, let's just give it a few months, see how it goes. And we've got four or five areas that need tweaked, need changed, need improved. You want to hit the high points for us? Uh, it's the notes that I have in there. 
pay next park, page. Parking in North Spring Street. Originally, when the board had discussed the paid parking, they wanted to leave uh, lot three on Spring Street, the new lot with the kiosk, a paid lot. That didn't make it through to the ordinance. Um, that's one place that. Uh, so that's 18 parking spots that are controlled by the with the kiosk in front of them. It right? could be the whole lot. That one to be. Yeah, the whole entire lot can be controlled by that kiosk. The entire lot could be controlled by the kiosk. Could be. Oh yeah. But it was previously just those 18 spots because the others were all leased rented by the month. They were permitted, but all permitted. that lot was changed and all that was taken off of it, so. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have, permitted spots now are, they can park anywhere in a parking lot. Right. For that $25 a month. And they, they can park there between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. So the permitting has changed. We don't have a specific space for that specific permit. So that, that's one that's one area of discussion. Um, Madison Street, Lot 6, where it used to be next to the Bank 1, J.P. Morgan Chase. Mr. Lubin is using that lot, but he approached the board about trying to make a consideration since he uses it 24 hours a day. And you, had, you said you'd work with him until we changed the ordinance. He wanted it half, 1250, for a permit instead of 25. So currently, we're not getting any money off that lot, nothing, until the board decides what they want to do for sure. He's not so paying anything. We, um, you said you'd work with them. Because the ordinance was It said 25, so I, yeah. So that needs uh, changed. And the certified mail, of course, you verbally said we need to remove that, and we do, because that's, that's very expensive. But the ordinance directs us to send a certified letter on those warnings. Well, I guess regular mail, we found with the police uh, interviews that it was wrong addresses and... But to me, you know, when you send a certified letter and then you follow it up with, okay, you ignored it, you're fine, you still have that option to come before the judge and say, I never got that warning. You still have that option. What would happen after we mailed the letter and they were, they were unresponsive, we would, is that a levy, the, the $50, $50 fine, fine. KPH, the KPH. next time they got a ticket. The next time they got a the ticket. The next, the next time would yeah, be. Yeah, we have got only certified no returns. So you have to wait a period of two weeks to see if the post office sends it back. In the meantime, you continue to get warnings. Right. So what? What's the legality of the? If it was mailed, but it was the wrong address. Even the, the address we would be using would be the DMV, DMV. address associated with that vehicle. Right. Right. So in a lot of cases, it could be the parents getting the letter for the yeah, but again, for I the come business. Back to the that's six fifty. Yeah, I don't. I don't see the necessity of a certified return receipt letter, but just the other thing that can happen: our municipal court can issue a a capius, which is basically a, a bench warrant and have it served, and our city police officers, if it's within Upshur County, have service of process uh, jurisdiction to take it out and serve it. I'm not looking to have our police officers run into French Creek and Hodgesville to try to collect a $20 parking yeah. thing. That's not my point. And 80% of the people don't live in town that get these tickets, and several of them don't live in the yeah. state. So, you know, there, there's some things that could be done over these tickets. If you don't pay, we, we could send these on to the DMV and they could suspend licenses and all kinds of things like that. I don't think they can for parking tickets. I don't th they can a citation, but not a parking ticket. That's kind of... Things like uh, handicap parking, I think that transcends the... Uh, ad. I'm almost positive that for some things. Sure it's just overtime parking, that might be more difficult to... So if we get losing your license for it. If they get the, if we send out the second warning, Morgan writes the warning, to, puts it on the car, we mail the letter, as soon as that, we mail it, or as soon as that second uh, we'll war giving, warning. We'll keep giving warnings to get certified, this problem. Well, we don't want that. So yeah. I agree with you to okay. get rid of okay. certified. So then, at that point in time, as soon as the ticket is, or the warning is issued, 
that's it. Well, in here I said give us a time frame. Give us a week, two weeks. After and then the morning? We, because we have to wait for them to have time. What if the car is just sitting there day after day after day? Well, we can do it immediately if you want to. I mean, that's your problem. I mean, I, you know. I have time, too. Um, it's your prerogative. You could want to wait for them to have time to get get it. I mean, a week, two weeks. Well, there's plenty. plenty of there will be plenty of signage. There's two warnings prior to so uh, that in the course of a day, Morgan, if you saw a car, well, this is only 3 a.m. to well, unless it's on Main Street or one of the streets. It's a two-hour parking, and you you issue one warning. Mm -hmm. do you, can you do you issue two warnings in a one day period? Yeah. 24 hours. So, so it would sit there and couldn't. I, I don't see why uh, why we'd wait around. I mean, okay. if you got two <laughs> two warnings and it's within two two consecutive days, if that's over, if it's in a lot, and someone was there overnight, and you got the, you you came to work early, so you were there from 5:30 to 6 to walk around all the lots. And make sure they were uh, permitted. And you, uh, two days in a row, this car was unpermitted. After the second one, then the following third time would be a fifty-dollar ticket. You would mail a letter somewhere in amongst there. Yeah, right after the second one. Right after that letter. second one, it might be in the mail, but. Okay. I mean, I, does that? I mean, does that? What does that sound reasonable? I don't know. I mean, the 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 reason for the second warning was to give them a, another chance. I think it's bending over sense. backwards, which was the intent you. that, you know, the third time you do something, you, let's just say with the drama that you experienced when someone from out of town that didn't see the sign and comes down here and is furious about the $25 ticket. So we don't want to shoot the first time visitor. No. We're trying to modify the behavior of the chronic violator. and. You know, if somebody gets that ticket the first time, they're going to tell 20 people the first day, 10 people the second day, and but the third time, I don't think I'm telling anyone. <laughs> I, mean, I got a ticket because I did something three times. I mean, I don't know what. Are, I think that's fair. And we clean the slate every two years, right? Yeah. That was, you know, I, yes. I wouldn't have a problem doing it annually, but. If you want to bend over backwards for what? It is getting, I mean, how many, we've got some that's had, what, 10 warnings? More than that. Because we are, we're having trouble. Well, it's because of the order, we're waiting. So I'm all for modifying this thing and getting it operational. What's the next one, Amy? Um, then the other, actually, the judge brought this language up in the section 361.99. It, <coughs> it tells you you can be imprisoned. And she says that would require a jury trial if they wanted to appeal it. And then another sec section contradicts all that and gives the judge right of way or uh, right to give you a ranging from five hundred one hundred to five hundred dollars. So yeah. that language needs fixed. Yeah, I don't know about the jail time. Yeah. Yeah, that should. No, this was a dead body in the back. Or something. <laughs> so yeah, that should that. definitely not be. Um, and then the other part, it's unclear if a separate warning uh, can be given to vehicles that roll from one space to the next throughout the day. <laughs> and we, we do have that. I'd like to have a way to modify that behavior. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would phrase that. Yeah, well, it would be maybe... So you get two hours on the a street in downtown Buchanan per day? <laughs> yeah, is that, I mean... Well, it takes six rolls on your tire, so you'd actually, you could go to another street. You just can't be in the same you know, <laughs> So you turn your feet. car around, she won't know if it's marked or not. Right. So you're within two <laughs> spots. So, so, yeah, uh, they can drive on the car with a spray car. You can drive on the off, too, you know. You wash it. Right. Yes, that's possible. Someone <laughs> removing the chalk, that should be written in there. Something. <clears throat> I bet you Tom O'Neill can come up with just something. <laughs> I have dandy about I'm given warning for they rolled over and tried to hide the chalk underneath the tire, but you can still see it picking up, peeking up from the bottom. Yeah. So I've, I've written those. So there's a few things like that. Um, then the, uh, 
one of the things, Morgan came up with a few things to actually generate a little bit of revenue in, in a proper way. I mean, um, she could come out, she's willing to come out early, between that 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. on occasion to check the lots to see who's parking in there. Yeah, random. That should be having, that should having, yeah, permits. Come at 5.30, take a half hour to walk the lots and yeah. see if they have any permitted yeah. vehicles Yeah, or because not. they'll get their warnings and then they'll get their permit. Yeah. Uh, yes. We haven't had any warnings <clears throat> issued for that violation. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see, when I come to work at 6 in the morning, I don't see a lot of vehicles at North Spring Street a lot. Maybe there's some other places. Uh, they look pretty full during the day, I mean, which is good. That means they're off the streets, but... Uh, yeah, she had some other ideas. Um, yeah. If you want to hear them. <laughs> if you want to hear them. Yes. <laughs> well, I did note that we've, how many permits that we've sold so far this year, which was 15 permits. It's, three, it's only been three individuals. Three individuals. Yeah. $375 we made them parking permits for overnight parking in the downtown area. And me enforcing that should generate some more, I would think. With, I would think. Yes. And um, and if you guys go to paid parking back in the parking lots again, I wasn't sure if you guys were planning on doing that. But um, I was thinking maybe doing permits just for the daytime and just for the nighttime. So there's two different permits. So you can so double, you know, if some people only work here and some people only sleep here, you know? So you're not booking the whole lot if people are only going to be working here. And then it'll be empty at night, you know? Well, I think the, the comprehensive plan that Bryson presented to Consolidated and the mm -hmm. Council, which was passed, has <coughs> some specific right. uh, guidelines, which those kind of reach out. I think the intention, my intention, or my the way I read it was, you know, the kiosk area, 18 spots would stay kiosk mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. And we'd like to modify that programming so if someone came visiting and wanted to leave their car there over the weekend, they could put $10 in or whatever yeah. that number is. And the, uh, all the streets were two hours, which the current signs we put up reflect that. Um, and then the parking lots, my thought was 10 hours, and then, then there, but then that doesn't leave, allow you to enforce yeah. it because your sh general shift is eight. So that's kind of a gray area, but it was always intended that 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., no parking on the streets. and. Own and permitted parking in the lots with a permit for $25 a month. Well, I was saying, if we go back, as my idea here is I was messing around with the kiosk software there last month because I, I updated it so that it won't accept payments because we were, we were still having to collect money or people were trying to pay for the parking. So I updated well, that. Right. Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> they're pulling the duct tape off the parking meters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I had, like, yeah, very honest people. <laughs> like, a sign up saying, you know, free parking, they'd rip it off and put money in. <laughs> but... She's got a $500 fine for violating our duct tape. <laughs> right, right. Destruction um, problem. I was, yeah. <laughs> if we do the monthly permits for people who can park overnight, I we could set the kiosk up where people, if they have guests, if let's say someone lives on Main Street and have a guest overnight, they can pay to park overnight and with the kiosk. You know, um, yes. 24 hours, but specific you can do it instead of paying hourly you can do like a specific you know, nightly permit you could price for a 24 hour <laughs> hearing if somebody yeah. wants to park there for 48 hours let's get the money in for 48 money? hours it only takes ones and fives well that's still paying yeah. money yeah. yeah ones and fives i'd like to yeah you could program i mean that. if we generated revenue down there with this then you, you would be more inclined to go the credit card route as long as you weren't paying more in credit card to use a credit card than you were in revenue you know, I asked people at a meeting today how many people carried change, and mm -hmm. nobody, but a lot of people said they had it in their car, mm -hmm. but they didn't carry it with them. But if, you, if it takes ones and fives, I would not I would uh, think programming it for X amount, whether it's 
five or ten dollars. I don't know how it works out. You can do all. Twenty-four you hours. You could you could sell the monthly for if you wanted to. Although my way my mind works, if I was if you get two warnings, you know, and you may not even be enforcing it on for Saturday and Sunday. But I take your chance. If they give the option to do the right thing and, and feel comfortable with your car not being in you know, threat of getting a ticket, I think that's worth the money. The only other thing about that, CJ, that I wondered is if you change that kiosk lot to a paid lot, is that fair to those businesses on Spring Street if you leave the others free parking? I mean, well, I that was a little bit of You know, because, well, the only reason, that because we paid, somebody we paid for that put it there so I don't think we want to and it went to a lot of I don't think you want to discard it it's the most proximate kind of to downtown so it's there and they pay a premium to use it there's certainly you know not that many feet away all these other parking spots that are free so I don't know that I mean I'm certain I certainly wouldn't think that that it would be unfair that that was a paid lot and the rest was free myself but you'd have to ask the rest of them. I think they wouldn't think it was fair especially because the other end of town has less parking I feel like Canola Street that area has less parking anyways. Mm. So you think it wouldn't be? It would? well, I, well I think people on Spring Street wouldn't think it was fair but they do have less parking on that side of town where lot one is up on the courthouse side. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there you've got Jawbone, you got the lot across from the... Now the lot across from the post office is to be two hours, right? Uh -huh. How's that, how are we going to deal with that overnight if somebody wants to park there? It's just it's the same. We're just going to say it's the same as a street? Yeah, it's, it has signs up. I think it says two-hour parking, doesn't it? And that lot doesn't yeah. Well, it needs signs. So, yeah, all the lots need signs once we get this yeah, hammered out. Yeah, we've been waiting on the, getting the, the rolls. final iron out on the parking and what we <coughs> want them to say. Yeah. And then we'd get signage and, up in the parking lot. And lots. that map we sent out designated where you could park all day. <coughs> that section was not. It says two hour parking on our maps that we distributed to people. And we yeah. can do that all over again. Education. I don't know what the rest of you think about the lot across from the post office. That's a, more of a turnover lot. I, I think two hours is adequate in the lot across from the post office. Is there any business in there that you're being over two hours? I mean, is there a hairdresser? Or? No, there's a pawn shop, Intermountain, phone place. Pizza shop. Pizza Unless shop. you have to mess, that's the only place you can find a park to go to a meeting at CJ's. Mm -hmm. yep. Two hours is. Like create. Sometimes I, I park there for create I know that they park there for that dance studio more than on two. each street. But it's generally after hours. Right. Now, it do is. we That's true. the two hour? I mean, the the honest part. I mean, I remember Fairmont. You know, the meters. It said on the meters, enforce nine to five p.m. Nine a.m. to five p.m. Do we want to say that it's? you know when we're enforcing it unless is there any other time of day that we enforce the two-hour roll other than when you're working well I don't know that the mere fact that it might not be there might not be a, a parking enforcement officer or a patrolman because police officers have jurisdiction over this too so the fact that it might not be as enforced, I don't think that should be a lot of invitation to not pay the fee. I have came across people, there's two hour signs outside of the downtown area and in front of businesses. And they'll take a picture of a car that's been there for a while and then come here and say, they've been here for so many hours and they want me to come and give them a ticket and they have a picture, you know. So they're self enforcing the two hours. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Lewisburg's entire parking enforcement plan is self enforced. Right. They have someone at City Hall answers the phone and <laughs> then, the, you know, they'll send them a message and then the mayor, once it's chronic, if it's, say, a downtown business is parking in front of their business, the mayor will send a uniformed officer to come speak with the person and say, 
as the mayor points out, we're all in this together. Would you please get with it and stop? And he said 99% of the time that works. So I don't see that that's negative. No, I don't. I'm just saying that just because I'm not here, the police right. department still. Somebody wants to get a ticket when you're not enforcing. Right. Yeah. There's still other people who can they'll call and they can still give that ticket. No, I don't see it. Leaving it at two hours and it is enforceable even though we may not be, it could be. Why don't we do this? We, we know these five bullet points issues and the couple of additional ones that Ambie and Morgan have brought up. Why don't we advance this, let them articulate the concerns further with Tom O'Neill. Uh, ask Tom to have something for consolidated to look at in the perfect world in advance of our July 27th meeting so that we will have it on the agenda to make a recommendation on the action back to City Council that has to approve this by ordinance uh, by our July 27th meeting. I would include Mr. Van Nostrand in the meeting with uh, Amby, Morgan, and Tom because he's really the one that uh, has studied this and has intentions, or someone, I'd be willing to help look, to sit in on that also. That's right. But let's, we've been waiting since January to get this down pat. I don't want to be talking about it January 20th. No, I think the sooner the better. Dennis, question. At what point would you have a car towed and have that parking fine levied on that car while it's in the impound yard? And then collect when the, the owner comes to get it. When was the last time we towed we a car? We, don't, we, don't we haven't done that in ages. We don't it's, you can't we find anyone to do a hostile tow. To I've tried. Hard. And, you know, the, they won't do it. Now, apparently, that time we had all that drama at the Strawberry Festival, that was someone from Three Gas years. Away or someone that mm -hmm. came up here and did it. but. Mm -hmm. I'd say you, you don't want to do that until it's a hazard. I'm sure the question would come up, but I have to think of it, so I, I throw it out there. So two of your responses. Yeah. Have towing in it. Unless it's abandoned vehicle, then we can go that route, but that's an abandoned vehicle. Okay. Um, Madison Street, Lot 6. So we are not collecting any money for him to keep no, his he Remember, he came to well, the consolidated yeah, meeting. But, I thought we agreed to take it down, and we can't collect money from him until it's in the ordinance. You all said you'd work with him, and we don't know. I mean, so the ordinance right. says $25. He's using all those vehicles and leaving them there and not paying a thing. Yep, because the ordinance says $25, and he came and talked to you all about that, and he said you would work with him on it. So it's, it's important to get this thing passed. It needs to be cleared so, up. So, you know, I feel we should have went ahead and started paying the 1250 I do, too. I do, too. I, I yeah. thought, yeah, I thought that's that's that, that was, I thought that I thought was that the intention. The agreement, you would say. Because if we, if we apply the ordinance as it is, he should have been paying 25 for yeah. long. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, either the ordinance is in, a, in effect or it's not in effect. And mm -hmm. I think he's... Well, uh, we're not enforcing it other places so I mean I, I think he's taking very advantage, advantage of the city. Maybe you aggregate all the fees that he owes and we have a conversation or a letter or something. Let's just get this thing in place and then these tweaks yeah. as quickly as possible and commence uh, collecting what we should have coming to us. Hmm. So we'll set up a meeting with the uh, Bryce and Tom, Morgan, yourself, and myself, and anyone else, other interested parties? Yes, yeah, so when Tom can attend. As soon as we can, so that we can, by the July meeting in four weeks, be ready to. Probably the first of July. And then understand, since it's a revenue generating thing, it still has to go back to the city council. So if we approve this July 27th and put it 1st August, Third, first Thursday in August, third Thursday in August. It's 30 days after that, which puts us toward the end of September before this would be in effect. Well, if everything goes like clockwork. We can go ahead and change uh, 
Morgan's schedule a little bit too to start doing some patrols. Sure. I don't know that we need a motion or a vote on anything. Does everybody understand what we're going to do between now and our July meeting? Okay. Very good. Okay, that's it for uh, strategic matters. That takes us down to board member comments. Uh, Pam, I'll start with you. What do you have for us? Mm, nothing except for uh, the lady on Randolph Street that we painted that yellow line so she could back out her uh, parking spot of her house. She's thrilled to death. That's really helping her, and especially when college gets back and stuff. So she's thrilled. What street did you say? Randolph. Randolph. Mm -hmm. Is it Pocahontas? Oh, Pocahontas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, here's a couple. Well, that's really <laughs> just one down, two okay. campus. What, uh, do you want to put a plug in for your June 30th uh, oh, festivities? Oh, yeah. Um, next Friday is our uh, 4th of July event. We'll be starting around 5 o'clock. It's in conjunction with uh, Festival Fridays. Uh, Festival Fridays will be having Stone Street playing that evening. But we are planning on, we're having cakewalks, we're having a um, climbing wall, we're having 50-50 um, in conjunction with Festival Fridays also. We're having a, a huge slide from uh, the carnival. They're letting us use that. Um, we're having archery. And those two things are going to be actually beside the safety complex in the grassy area where Jim Hinkle owns. And we're having bounce house. We're having um, sand art bocce ball tournament, hoop shoot tournament, um, cornhole tournament, and a couple other things I'm probably forgetting. So that'll all be next Friday. Safety complex. Dunking booth, right? Dunking booth, oh yes. <laughs> and um, we're working on people for the dunking booth. There'll be a police officer who gives lots of tickets. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna have um, one of the firemen's gonna be in there and Robbie Skinner, one of our council people, is going to be in there. Uh, Rose Clutter is going to be in there. A 77 year old lady is going to be in there. And uh, a couple other spots available if anybody would be interested in making some money for Stock or Youth. So, that's sure. it. Be fun. And fireworks, of course, about 9 30, 10 o'clock. Mr. Islands. I'm good. I already talked enough. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Mr. Walda, what do you got for us? One of the things we've mentioned before, and I don't know where we are or where not, uh, what, what we've done, but uh, this town is not very crosswalk friendly. Um, <coughs> I'd like to see what we could do to move forward on, on encouraging uh, crosswalks and, and, and um, sort of prodding people to, to allow people to cross, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's at the college or pulling St. Clair or um, at the post office. It's just, it's sort of willy-nilly and, and I, sometimes <coughs> people are gracious and other times it's, you can see 40 cars go by and no one stopped. I mean, they didn't slow down, you know. To, Mark, we've talked about adding a little sign below the stop sign. <coughs> something to the effect, yield to pedestrians in crosswalks. I mean, that's what people are supposed to be doing anyway. Right. But uh, some folks just don't understand the laws of the road. But, but that's, that's, that's worthy of consideration on our stop signs, especially downtown. Do we have no. meetings set up with the highway department coming up? Add that, that to the list down. of, the list of, I mean, it, it, we just, anywhere where we don't have, uh, where it's not a state highway, we can do this, right? right. City Street, right. But yeah. Main Street. We could check with Doug. I don't know that they would have any opposition to us adding a second sign on our stop signs, but we, don't ask, don't get. We'll inquire and see if they'll allow us to do that. But I'd, yeah, I'd like to, I'd just sort of like to brainstorm on what we might do to sort of encourage this behavior. You know, it, you go out west, and I mean, you, you you start to cross the street, and I mean, people stop immediately. You yeah, know, and that's that's a cultural. That's a cultural. Uh, yeah. uh, modification that we just don't have. I mean, here, we're more likely to speed up. We're having a meeting in July with our pedestrian friendly committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll try to add you, at least give you a notice of it. But it's, it's on the agenda. OK. okay. So, yeah. well, okay. Um, the other problem is, yeah, we know, when those of us who walk a lot, people not signaling. 
Yeah. Like you think oh, they absolutely. can start the cro the crosses and then they're <laughs> and next thing you know they're making a left. Yeah, like, no, but a you lot can't tell of what no, they're doing. no signaling. Uh -huh. Some people and go it's out hard without own. the stoplight. I mean, there are blood flowing. But the you know without the stoplights downtown, sometimes it's really hard mm -hmm. to cross. Some people go out of their way to be pedestrian friendly, and others sort of take offense that you're a pedestrian. Well, I think they just don't notice. <laughs> well, they did. Uh, Some right, people right. take offense. No, to I'd, I'd, I'd like to. Okay. I'd like to think that. But no, it's yeah. it's sort of like don't dare, don't step out. Yeah. yeah. Jay. To add to, to Mark's comments, I believe, and, and I'm pretty sure that it, you are not allowed to put any other signage on a stop sign. It is purely for a stop sign only. Uh, if you want warning signs in advance of that, it has to be a completely separate sign, but I can find that out. But I'm pretty sure that no other signage can go on a stop sign. What about the uh, crossbars? Could that, that be little yield pedestrians on the two ends of the crossbars? I, 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 I will check on that. The Sustainability Committee suggested having them solar powered so they would light up at night, especially on um, Kanawha when people were but somebody said they were pushing baby strollers and trying to cross. And if, if we wanted to get really uh, no one would stop for them to cross. <laughs> really progressive in this regard, at the primary entrance points, especially closer to downtown, we could put up other signs that would say, "Welcome to Buchanan, a pedestrian-friendly community. Yield to pedestrians in crosswalks." I mean, you don't want to put too much on a sign. Three or four of those might might adjust some behavior to it. If you've, all pedestrian crosses. Yeah. If you've been to That encourages them to go to the corners and stops the mid block crossing. Well, yeah, sometimes it seems safer to cross the middle of the block than go to the corner. That's, I mean, that's how it I feel they're not signaling. That's absolutely the case. If you've been to Front Street in downtown Marietta, they have a large mm -hmm. the, the, like the aluminum crossbars that used to hold up our street lights just to say uh, yield to pedestrian and crosswalk, and they know that that's you know every pedest every customer to every downtown business is a pedestrian. And if how do we, when I walk out of Walmart and there's a car coming, I'm not in basic fear of my life. I mean they they've always stopped when I and you don't. So how do we get that same mentality in our downtown streets that you know, I think there is a there is a tend that the highway is for the cars and you're in my way. But well, I agree with Mark. Let's not keep kicking the can down the road. Let's so let's meeting in July. do Claire. some stuff to uh, advance the cause. So we'll we'll see. we've got that meeting. I don't know exact date. Jerry's not here today. He's on vacationing this week, but uh, it's on. It's on the radar. I mean, this, this the sign that's in front of the post office. I think everyone kind of follows. Respect It's yeah. hard to not so. see yeah. it. Yeah. They, they see that, and it's like okay. the state that will say they they are not allowed, allowed to do it. Now I've showed well, I got in this argument when we did this before, and that one in front of the post office, and I had pictures of German Street in Shepherdstown, yeah. yep. which is a state highway, which had the man, and yeah. I sent the pictures to the state guy, and he goes. Well, we told them not to do it and strongly, and strongly recommended that they remove them. But they were still there. Yeah. Now, Davis Avenue put them up when they redid their lights, and they got them too close to the intersection, and the buses couldn't turn. Mm. So there's, some, there's multiple considerations. You know, plowing is an issue, and turning is an issue with the in-street signs. They are effective. You've got a, a prototype uh, stop sign with the LED lights on the outside of the stop sign, too, that would That's, further, that uh, would further uh, embellish. Stop really means stop. And, yeah, it doesn't mean stop and plow through if somebody's in the crosswalks, right? Anything else, Mark? Susan, you got anything for the uh, consolidated trips? Justin, I'm thrilled we're going to have recycling receptacles in receptacles in Java. Thank that's a, you. That's a good move. Mm -hmm. Morgan, anything else? Brad, anything else? I've got just a Mary couple. Mary has something. Oh, Mary. I don't know that this even has anything to do with consolidated, but I rode I rode on that road between uh, where the Sega Road is and then over by the Light Chapel. You know what road? Stony I'm talking? Run. Yeah, 
liquor in there. But. So anyway, it had a yellow double line on it. It was so awesome to drive on that road for the first time. So I don't know whether it has to do with you or the county, but yeah, anyway, she didn't do that one. It was really great. I'm sure that would have been the state red, right? The county, the county doesn't. The county doesn't. There are no county roads either. So it's it's either the state or the city, but. Duly noted. <laughs> Just a couple of quick things. Uh, we're working on the signage is prepared for the bicentennial sycamores. Uh, three of those as part of the bicentennial celebration last year were designated, one in Jawbone Park, uh, one just to the right of the boat ramp uh, on the campus of the college, and then the third one will go in close proximity to the current Pringle Tree at Pringle Tree Park. So that's coming up. Um, and somebody took my uh, necklace thing, the DEP award. What happened? It got swiped. <laughs> anyway, uh, June 6th, uh, several of us went to Charleston, and Buchanan was selected uh, as the greenest, most environmentally friendly community in West Virginia. And that is in no small, small part attributed to the efforts of all of our employees, including those that work in streets and parks. Uh, some of the recent initiatives, such as the planting of uh, wildflower seeds that have resulted in some terrific looking uh, flowers that encourage bees and uh, expand the bee population. Uh, one of the things that uh, I had an email exchange just in the last 24, 48 hours with Jerry and Ambie about was, I promised uh, Rob Barber and Lindsey Beaver who came to us back, I think, in December or January with the wildflower idea that we would invest in another big 40-pound cube of wildflower seeds to plant even more uh, next year. There are places in our cemetery that we could plant uh, wildflower seeds. We have some more FEMA lots that we've not yet uh, planted the wildflower seeds. Uh, it's just the, the right thing to do. And the council uh, resolved at the meeting last week to expand our green sustainability efforts. Everything we do, we want to try to be conscious of how can we do this in the most earth-friendliest way. So more good stuff to come with that. But it's nice to get an honor like that. And we're going to try to exploit it a little bit. We have some signs coming into town that will recognize our efforts. Um, what else? I think I had one more thing. Brad Cutright will be working on some water fountain designs for Jawbone Park and Stockard Youth Center. Uh, we're not ready to make any announcements yet on the new auditorium at Stockard, but we're working on a plan, and in the next month or two, we hope to be presenting uh, something about that new auditorium to the folks at Stockard, to City Council, to Consolidated. Uh, we just need to figure out how we're going to fully fund it. But it's on the radar screen, and we're picking up the rocks trying to figure that part of the puzzle out. Will the water fountains have refill, water bottle refill stations included? It will if uh, we tell Brad Cutright that we need him to, you know, incorporate that. <laughs> well, if we're going to be encouraging design. those kids to be using reusable water bottles and it's a plastic water bottle. <laughs> Might be a, nice to have a place where they can refill. <laughs> 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 Hide your purse. Sure, I mean, we, we need to. That's what we did on our floor at the college. We've got enough plastic. Enough plastic. Yeah, we should. That was another suggestion. Was to ban that or not? Yeah. Right there, yes. <laughs> quite there, yeah. <laughs> but we need places where they can refill water bottles. Yeah. Not I think it's a great idea. Plastic. It's a great idea. That's all I have. Does anybody else have anything else to the good of the order? If not, I'll consider a motion to adjourn. May I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Rollins. May I have a second? A second by Mr. Waldo. Wait, Dennis has another. My no, I was going to second. Uh, he seconded. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go Dennis ahead. is about to get shot. We'll have a new cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> I have a second by Mr. Waldo. Is there any discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor of adjournment. Signify by saying aye. Aye. We shall stand adjourned.